People like to think that the heavily armored dinosaurs, like Ankylosaurus, were just these totally indestructible tanks of the dinosaur world. There's even an entire subreddit for just ink memes, where it's memes about Ankylosaurus and its relatives. It's very much a trope that we see in a lot of media, even as far back as Walking with Dinosaurs, where the Ankylosaurus breaks the ankle of the adult Tyrannosaurus Rex. But we're finding more and more evidence that they weren't necessarily tanks that were totally indestructible, and it seems like at least one of the fossils we have from Mongolia actually had an injury that was so severe that the animal died. It's the skull of Tarchia, an ankylosaur coming from Mongolia, and even before we look super in depth at the skull, we knew there was some chance that it had been damaged. There's a hole going into some parts of it, and part of the front portion of the skull is very clearly damaged, it's just missing. All this is to say that at some point it got bonked on the head by something, and that eventually led to its death, at least based on what the researchers found. They mainly present two main hypotheses. One is that it was attacked by a tyrannosaur like Tarbosaurus, and that's what caused the head injury. Although I'm not totally sold on that one, it is getting more press because it's a much better story than it was fighting another Tarchia and happened to get bonked on the head by a tail, or by the head of another Tarchia. Of these two hypotheses, I kind of instinctively went, well, the Tyrannosaur biting one is a little strange because, I mean, it was getting bitten on the head, what's the likelihood it would have made it? But then the authors look at closer detail into some of the holes on the skull that do match up pretty well with the diameter of the teeth in Tarbosaurus. Additionally, there's some gouges that were scraped into the bone, which is something else we see in Tyrannosaurus rex bites, which Tarbosaurus is a Tyrannosaurus rex, but, you know, they're related. You should expect to see some of the same kind of patterning in their attack wounds. And as for the impact that this actually had on this specimen, it's because they actually weren't trying to look at this animal specifically, if that makes sense. They were actually trying to look at three different Mongolian ankylosaurs, only one of which is Tarchia, the other two being Shamosaurus and Cychonia. And they wanted to CT scan the skulls of all of these animals in order to compare their nasal passageways to those of already scanned ankylosaurs from North America. Now, based on the first set of these scans, that again, are looking more at this injury rather than the direct shape of the pathways, it is pretty different from things from North America like Euoplocephalus. So that means that in the evolutionary line for ankylosaurs, the Asian ones and the North American ones probably split off pretty early from one another. This makes a lot of sense because ankylosaurs have super complex nasal passages. And so it's one of those things you can actually do to see how they may have been evolving or separating out evolutionarily compared to the North American ones. So it is a perfectly reasonable study to not necessarily look for just the damage in this tarchia. But then they found the damage and the evidence of the damage and what it did to this animal. Now I've already mentioned some of the damage that is apparent on the outside of the skull. And there's more inside that we're gonna get to because CT scanning does great stuff, but that's essentially all it would have seemed like at first, just some broken bones in and around the nose, which, you know, is unfortunate for this individual, and it managed for at least a while even like that. And the reason we know that is because there are some signs the bones tried healing. This is mostly characterized by new bone growth, the problem is it's not super healthy bone growth, meaning there may have also been an infection associated with this broken nose. And without the ability to go to a modern doctor and get its nose rebroken to clear out those nasal passages, there was a lot of stress building up in the sinuses of this tarchia. This infection actually messed up a lot of the nasal passageways attempts to heal, because you actually got these little mineralized pieces coming from the body that are just filling up the nasal passages. So essentially it's trying to grow new bone, but it's just not growing it in the right place necessarily. And then there's other parts of the infection that are mineralizing as well. The largest of these was pushed pretty far back in the nasal passageway, and it actually interacted with the bone of the nasal passageway in a way that caused bone to actually grow into parts of the nasal passageway, meaning it was blocking more airflow. This is kind of like what you see in nasal polyps that can develop in people with allergies, which as someone who experiences allergies pretty badly, sounds miserable. So if we had to absolutely make bets on what happened to this Tarchia, it was attacked by Tarbosaurus or something similar, and it got bit on the head. However, because it's still very heavily armored and potentially was able to fend off its attacker, it was able to survive that attack for at least some time. However, the complications of both the breaking of the bones and the infection that subsequently followed eventually caused this Tarchia to be 
unable to breathe or potentially even feed depending on how swollen and how damaged the rest of the respiratory tract and also the throat may have been because of this attack. And so despite us knowing that dinosaurs had pretty good immune systems based on some injuries we find in other dinosaurs, it seems like this was just one bridge too far for this Tarchia to actually try and survive. And so it did die because of a traumatic head injury, which is unfortunate for it. 